listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. Man, we have another guest, returning guest. We have Chester Human. She is with Human Coalition. You can go to the website, hughcoaction.org. And like always, she's going to give us an update what has been going on. Man, it's been a hot topic for a couple of days. So Chelsea, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. So tell us uh, what's been going on. What's the latest uh, hot topic right now in the headlines? Yeah, there's so much going on in the book, both the pro-life world and the abortion world. Um, and what we're seeing is just a continuation of this pattern of extremity when it comes to abortion out of the pro-abortion crowd. Um, most recently, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists called for abortions without limitation um, in the U.S. And this is, of course, the main group, the main organization, all OBGYNs in the country um, that the society they're a part of, and they're really calling for some extreme things from their members. And with ACOG's argument that, quote, abortion improves and saves lives, quote, I mean, compared to what Human Coalition is trying to do to educate women, is that a little bit misleading on their statement? It's very misleading. Um, They went on to say, ACOG went on to say that they want abortion without restrictions, without limitations, and without barriers, Um, which means, of course, through all three trimesters of pregnancy, you can have a perfectly viable newborn child, um, late-term pregnancy that could be killed by abortion under their procedures and guidelines for medical professionals. Um, It's really horrific. But of course, abortion takes lives. It doesn't save lives. Every abortion ends in the death of a human child in the womb. Um, And for their mothers, it's often irreparable what they go through. Um, Over 80% in some studies have said they were changed, moms were changed for the worse after their abortion. Things like depression, suicide rates are increased after a woman has an abortion, incarceration rates, substance abuse rates, you name it. Um, abortion ruins lives, of course. It doesn't save them. And with the whole debate that it seems to never uh, decrease, but seems to increase recently, and that is pro-life versus pro-choice. I mean, both sides are passionate in what they do. But when it comes to life, I mean, why do you think that uh, the other side is is still trying to back up the whole abortion part? Because I know everyone wants to talk about, you know, they provide other services. Well, I think organizations like your organization that you're part of, you are trying to counter the small part about aborting. That's right. There are so many organizations, including ours at Human Coalition, We serve pregnant women in need every single day who are seeking abortion. And 76% of women seeking abortion say if their circumstances were different, they would actually prefer to be a mom and to parent their unborn children. And so we want to offer them that assistance, help them get those circumstances changed. Um, They view the obstacles in front of them as insurmountable and for us to come alongside them, empower them and tell them we believe they're able, we believe they're capable, um, and that they can do this. It's such a different message than the message of death and instability coming from the abortion movement. Now, once again, you can uh, visit hucoaction.org, or you can also visit humancoalition.org. I I talked to uh, the president, uh, Jeff Bradford, not too long ago, and he shared again with his personal story of the effects of, you know, abortion. And that's a real story, a personal story. Do you think that uh, more women are starting to be aware of their options, if you will? Because staying neutral in the argument, I I feel like organizations like Human Coalition, you are more neutral in trying to educate women of their options. I wish I could say that they were. I mean, we're doing the best we can to reach every single woman who's pregnant and hopeless that we can. Um, But at the same time, we're up against you know, an entire media machine who has been spent 50 years telling women their only option to success is to have an abortion. Um, We're shut down in our speech. 
I mean, a lot of states are starting to even prosecute and arrest um, people who are having outreach to women and telling them their options. So it's an uphill battle. Um, it's a fight for life and death. It's a, a fight for free speech. It's a fight to let women know what resources she's eligible for, what resources she's available. We would love to keep getting the word out there to her, but it is a challenge. And speaking of that challenge, what are some of the recent efforts that the organization that you've brought of that you're doing to expand the the knowledge and and reach to educate more women? Yes, I love that you're asking that. Our goal is to get into 26 states um, in the next few years. So anything we can do to partner with states and build out programs that care for pregnant women in need is a top priority. But the other thing we did very recently is we filed an amicus brief in a lawsuit at the Supreme Court um, that really holds criminal anyone who gives women resources, education, and options outside of an abortion clinic in New York. Um, and we intervened in that and filed that brief and said, hey, women want options and care. 97% of the women we serve seeking abortion say they feel cared for, that they welcome options, um, that the work we're doing for them is meaningful and important, even among women who go on to have an abortion, that sometimes it can help change their lives and circumstances for the better so that they won't make that decision again. That's the goal of the movement. Um, and you can learn more about all of this at humancoalition.org. Last question for you. Hopefully it's not a bad question, but isn't Planned Parenthood a nonprofit? Well, it depends how you look at it. You know, we know that 97% of their services are abortion related um, and they are having a problem now. They did not repay their Medicaid funding. There's a giant Medicaid fraud lawsuit against them in the state of Texas. It's a $1.8 billion case um, that they're saying could even put them out of business. So yes, Planned Parenthood makes a ton of money. They get $700 million from the federal government alone. Um, but we're hopeful that they do go out of business. We're hopeful that women realize that they don't need abortion. Abortion is unnecessary and that they have better options available for them. And the only reason why I asked that question is because if they really are there to educate women, then why fight the other side? Well, that's exactly true. They're in the money-making business. They're in the business of death. Um, and that's why they perpetuate a quarter of a million abortions a year um, in some in some years. So they don't want women to know their options are better. And we find that they're often misleading our clients, telling our clients that abortion is as easy and safe as taking a Tylenol when we know Tylenol doesn't cause hemorrhage, Tylenol doesn't produce death, Tylenol doesn't traumatize the people that take it. So they obviously lie to women, um, but we want women to know the truth. We want women to know they have options and that there's compassionate care here. We're available. We're a support system um, for as long as it takes with each woman. Once again, listen, I'll be fucking radio talking to our guest today, Chelsea Human. You can go visit the organization that she's part of. It's humancoalition.org or hecoaction.org. I know this is probably a strong tone in this episode, but I think it's a necessary dialogue. So I want to say thanks again, Chelsea, for your time. Thanks for having me. Always, always glad to be here.